at one point, someone who runs a who now runs a major news organization was actually talking about what we're actually going to do is get rid of all the journalists, and we're just going to have news organizations that will service other organizations, and our salespeople will be experts in selling search engine optimization and search engine marketing. And so everybody's well, like panic. Yeah. This is the yeah. panic moment where everybody's going like, oh my God, we have to grab onto something. Oh, it's clicks. Well, guess what? It turns out it's not really about clicks. Or maybe it is. I don't know. Is it? I was went to a conference over the weekend where the reporter who was who works for the um, Orange County uh, Alternative Press oh, yeah. was saying that he that he's asked to do listicles, which are kind of clickbait, where you go down and you click different things. I hear that and I think of something else entirely. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, listicles. But, but I, why I don't think that's an enduring idea is because I think it's a commodity, and if the top twenty play, paces places to buy ice cream is a news story, then everybody will do their own top 20 list. But then why does BuzzFeed, which makes apparently is profitable, made $120 million in revenue last year, why is BuzzFeed continuing their listicles and hiring serious reporters to create a serious news organization? How is that? Well, maybe they're onto something. Well, but like, what do you think? I mean, is that, does that fit together? I just don't know how commodity information in a world where you can get it from so many different places can be an enduring business advantage. Right. But I think you have to specialize and you have to have something as nearly unique as you can. That's kind of my business view. I, I could be wrong. All right. So, so then in the, in the, from the business perspective, if you think of Twitter, lost, I think, $500 million in the last quarter of last year is occasionally be profitable for like a day or two. I mean, how, how do you imagine these things evolving? Well, the theory of those things was, in my mind, best articulated by Vinod Khosla. Why was, we were partners in a venture capital uh, partnership and the, a guy came in that had phenomenal traffic and somebody around the table was saying, well, what's the, what's the profit plan? You know, how is this thing gonna become a business? And Vinod said, if you give me enough traffic, I'll figure out some way to make it profitable. And I think that's kind of what's driving some of the internet acquisition prices. If you give me this fire hose of traffic and behavior, I will eventually figure out some way to do it. Right, but the Vinod conversation was how many years ago? Um, some years ago. Okay. But, 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 but he, that comment was made in the era when Google wasn't profitable. Right. Right, so Google figured it out. And it was right. about search, and it was about advertising. Yeah, <clears throat> you know how well, many. My friend John Dorr said that all internet success stories are based on finding a needle in a haystack, and if you make a list of the successful companies, a lot of them are like that. Not all of them. Twitter, for example, is not about finding a needle in a haystack.